Hello, every Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. This time we'll cover a topic that I'm sure you will like a lot and we'll talk about Entity Framework Core. Now when it comes to uh, Entity Framework Core, we already have some videos on it. We, we have a getting started guide for, for, begin for beginner developers and then we have a very, uh, very simple way of implementing a repository pattern. And what we would like to do in this video, we kind uh, we would kind of like uh, to make a logical follow-up to what we already have and to work on the same application and then just to extend uh, this application with some further step and introduce a new concept of course related in this uh, case or in this regard to uh, EF core and today we'll talk about one to many relationships. Before we get started there is one point that uh, I would like to, to single out uh, and this is that this video is also intended for beginner developers. So if you are a .NET developer at the beginning stage of your career then this video might be for you because you kind will understand how these type of relationships are working here and how the magic behind uh, EF Core actually works. But if you are a more seasoned .NET developer, please bear in mind that since this is a video for beginners, uh, a lot of things will be oversimplified uh, by choice. Uh, of course, there will be some uh, subsequent videos where we will uh, talk about more advanced topics uh, in more depth, but for now we'll try to keep things as simple as possible. So this being said, uh, let's get it started. Just a short reminder here about the application that we have. And here we have basically a very, very simple application. Right now we have only one model, which represents a book. And we have, of course, also a controller because what we built was an API, but the controller really doesn't, uh, or, or is, not, is not of great interest right now for us. However, what is uh, of great interest for us is this property here that we see uh, on our book model, which is the author, which we store just very, very simple as a string. Now, of course, this is not a perfect approach because for the author itself, we would have a lot of different type of properties that we want to know about the author. Maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, his first name or its last name, uh, what books has the author written, uh, and maybe date of birth, uh, further information like studies and things like that. So this means that we would need to, e to extract the author in a separate and uh, dedicated class for that specific author. Which means that afterwards we will kind of need to build a relationship between this book model and the author model which in the end will result in two different tables in the database. So let's get uh, right to it and add here a new class for our author. So let's add a new class, let's call this class author uh, and it's of course a public class. Now we will need a very very few properties here right now. Uh, for starters we will need an ID. Let's uh, public int uh, author ID. And we'll have just uh, two strings uh, for the properties, public string first name, and we will have a last name, public string last name, get set. Okay, so this would be it for now. Let's go for one second back to our book class. And here in our book class right now, since we have a dedicated class for the author, we actually don't need this property anymore. So we can simply remove it. However, now we have to think about how can we create this relationship between an author and a book or several books. And of course, uh, in a real world application, what we would have as a relationship is that a book could have several authors. So one book has many authors, but an author of course could write several books. So this would be a many-to-many -many relationship, but this is not the topic of this video. So right now we want to talk about one-to-many relationship. So for this use case, let's just assume that our book uh, or a book can only be written by one author. In other words, a book has only one single author, but on the other side, an author could write several books. So this means that we would have to configure a one-to-many relationship between uh, the author and the book class. And there are several ways in which we can do that in, 
EF core. It's not complicated at all. You will see that. But there are some, or th there are three different possibilities with uh, with uh, very very small tweaks to them. And what I want would uh, would be to go through these uh, possibilities. And most of them uh, follow conventions because usually in uh, uh, EF core we work a lot uh, with conventions when it comes to very very simple or common tasks if we have some more complex logic for for mapping relationships and table names and things like that then of course uh, we can uh, manually tweak things around using also the fluent api but this is something that we will cover in subsequent videos right now what is important for us is uh, or for me is just to understand how this one to many uh, relationship mapping works when using conventions what we uh, do most of the time so the first way in order uh, to create a one-to-many relationship would be to use a navigation property now a navigation property is not something very complicated it's actually just a normal property uh, here in this case on the uh, author class it let's say kind of navigates away to another class or to a different table if we think about the database that we will have behind. So we can have here a public a property and what type of, of, of data type do we actually need for this navigation property? Because we said we want to establish a one, so one author, to many, so many books, relationship. So in this case it's very very easy by convention we can just use a collection here as the data type for this navigation property and uh, let's make this an i collection and of course uh, we have to specify also the type because this is a generic uh, collection so uh, it's an i collection of book because an author could be the author of several books and we'll give it a name of books and of course get set so when we used this property which once again from ef core perspective is called a navigation property because it's kind of navigates away from this class slash table to a different uh, class slash table and this is uh, actually sufficient uh, in order to create this one to many relationship between author and book and of course before we can get uh, this tested we have to go to the app db context and add the author as a db set here public uh, db set of author and we'll call this uh, authors get set and uh, that's it so right now what we could do we could already uh, try to figure this out so let's add the migration add migration and let's call this add author v1 because this is the first way that we can create this one to many relationship we look into uh, two other different ways uh, so we'll call this migration add v1 so that we can compare them afterwards so let's try to add this this migration right now and it seems that uh, everything works so let's look into the generated migration class this class once again is a short reminder each time we create a migration what entity framework core does is it generates a migration class where you can basically look and see what will happen when you want to update the database because once again right now we just added this migration so the intent of changing something in a database but the database in the backend is still the same so no update was applied to the database but that's now the place where you can review this and, and take a look what would happen when we apply this migration to the database and first of all we will see that uh, there is a drop column on the books table because we have removed the property called author on the book table of course uh, it will uh, remove uh, the entire column because it is not needed anymore and then uh, what happens is see that on the book uh, on the books table we add or the migration will add a new uh, a column which is called author id uh, and it is not nullable and it is of type int so this is actually the mapping uh, to the author so each book uh, will have basically the foreign key to the author that uh, wrote that specific book and then uh, what it does is that it creates a new table of course that is called uh, authors and if you look in this table we can uh, see different uh, uh, columns that it will create for the id which will be also the primary key uh, then 
uh, the first name and the last name so it's exactly what we have uh, expected it also creates some index um, it creates here a foreign key and uh, other things like that and also what happens when we delete a resource with these uh, referential actions and uh, this concept of referential action is something that is not really complicated but is very very important so we'll have a dedicated video uh, where we'll talk about about what re referential action actually means what the different options are and what the behavior is uh, in uh, these different uh, types of uh, options now uh, I guess that uh, this would be okay so uh, I don't want to update the database right now what I want to do uh, instead is uh, actually try to go uh, to the next uh, way uh, that we could uh, create actually this uh, this one to many relationship and the the second way we could do that is uh, using what we call an inverse navigation property now once again, what we call an inverse navigation property is not something very complicated. Uh, actually, uh, the author class will remain uh, absolutely like it is before. So uh, we won't change uh, anything here. But we can, what we can do is because maybe when we get a book from the database, we want to also get the information about uh, the author that uh, wrote the book so in that case we can kind of like uh, add here a new property which would be public and uh, then uh, it would be of type author and we can also name it author now the idea why we call this an inverse navigation property is because uh, as said in author we have this i collection of book that we call the navigation property and basically what we have in book this author navigates back to this specific property so this is why we call this an inverse navigation property now the idea is that this is also sufficient right now so uh, if you want to create a one-to-many relationship using this way with inverse navigation property uh, you just have to add here in this book class for instance a new property of type o in our case author that would navigate back let's say to this table here and actually uh, this would be okay so let's try to add a new migration add migration add author uh, v2 and now we see that uh, we created a migration file but we don't have uh, actually nothing here uh, in what happens when we when we will or when we want to kind of apply the migration and the reason why this happens is that no matter if you configure this one to many relationship using only one single navigation property of type of type i collection like we did here and no matter if instead of using only the navigation property you also add an inverse navigation property what happens uh, behind is that uh, it generates exactly uh, it would generate exactly the same thing that we generated in in the previous migration and since these two migrations or the last migration would generate the exact same thing that we have here it basically created an empty migration so nothing will change uh, after we did uh, this very uh, very small change now that's very very simple and and uh, we are kind of done and there is the third way that we can uh, use in order to create this one to many relationship and the third way is what we can call a fully defined relationship and this fully defined relationship actually builds on what we already have so right now just a summary we have this book where we have this inverse navigation property uh, to the uh, author class and then we have author where we have a navigation properties that contains uh, actually a list of books so this means that we create a one to many relationship now what it means to have a fully uh, defined uh, relationship is that the author class would actually remain the same so it, it, it would kind of be exactly the same uh, that we have here but uh, here what we would have to add is a public 
it would be int and author id and this is actually a, a, a way to specify more clearly and more exact more concise uh, that clearly here we have the foreign key for the author and then we have the information itself about uh, that uh, specific uh, author now let's uh, go back here and add a migration add migration let's call this add author uh, v3 and right now it should be done and in this case we see that uh, even if we still have the same kind of one-to-many relationship uh, that, that, that we did build uh, previously now that we have used a fully qualified uh, uh, or a fully uh, configured relationship uh, it means that uh, some things will change now of course here uh, since we added this uh, this column this property uh, on book in a very uh, let's say uh, explicit way uh, what it does is of course it sees that it changes something to that column and it drops the foreign key uh, it alters the column uh, and so on uh, and it adds then uh, the foreign key once again and basically what happens is that uh, everything else actually stays the same now if we look better on what happened between the first migration that we created today and this last migration actually the only real difference that we have between these two different ways of coughing our uh, one-to-many one -many relationships is that when we used only a navigation property and also a navigation property and an inverse navigation property the on delete referential action uh, was on restrict now that we have a fully qualified relationship where you specify also on book the foreign key that we want to use then uh, the on delete referential action is on cascade and as said i don't want to get into these details right now i plan to do a brand new video talking about this different type of referential actions and coming also with a uh, different uh, with different uh, examples to see exactly uh, how this type of of setting could actually affect uh, the way that our database uh, changes when we actually want to apply the, mig the, the migrations and and uh, update the database and in fact before we wrap up this is exactly what we want to do uh, we, want, we will run update uh, database and uh, this should update right now the database that we have in backend uh, okay can it over so new into column author id uh, okay we have an error here uh, because something is null and this has probably something to do with the fact uh, that uh, the migration v1 and migration v3 uh, kind of uh, overlap in a certain way but I don't think I, I would like right now to, to spend more time to dive into this error but I can assure you that uh, if you go from, from, from the first try uh, uh, either for the first approach where you create only a very simple navigation property or for the third approach where you create a fully defined one-to-many relationship uh, everything should actually uh, work fine so yeah that would be uh, for today thank you very much for for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you find this content useful don't uh, forget to to subscribe uh, to hit the thumbs up button that would be also very very important to me to to know that that you found it, this content useful and of course don't be shy and if you know people that might benefit from this content then then just share it uh, 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 with your friends uh, share it in your networks that would be very very helpful this being said once again thank you very much and until the next time i wish you the very best and stay safe